coming to town. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very, very much. And, uh, and Don Cunningham, the uh, Lehigh County Executive, uh, thank you very much for being here. And I'm told uh, our 15th congressional candidate, Sam Bennett, is here. Sam, where are you? Oh, Sam. Hey, you got your Philly shirt on. All right. Good to see you, Sam. And all our friends in organized labor, thanks for all the help you've been throughout this campaign. You know, my, uh, my wife, Jill, uh, who is a professor at a community college back home, uh, my wife, Jill, uh, sat through those six innings in the rain outside, and I'd call her on the phone. I said, honey, you're going to catch cold. She said, my hair is matted, I'm soaked to the skin, but I'm not leaving. And I said, well, honey, they're going to call the game. She said, well, Joe, if they call the game, I'm coming back to the end. So instead of being with me last night, she was the Phillies game last night. <laughs> and I want to tell you, this is a Philly girl. This is a, we're both from Pennsylvania, but this is a Philly girl. I'm a Scranton guy. And I want to tell you something. So this morning, I find out, I get my son calls him and says, uh, or my daughter actually, says, I wish you could be here. We were in Missouri, I just flown up from Florida, campaigning in Missouri, in St. Louis. He said, you won't believe it, Dad. Mom's on WIP All Sports Radio this morning talking about it. I don't know, man, I tell you what. She's talking about Brad Legs. Well, I tell you. That must have uh, given her an idea because she called me after this over and Joe, you have to be this campaign's lights out guy. So I'm here to turn the lights out. This is the most important election yes, any of you in this gymnasium have ever voted in. The single most important election. And ladies and gentlemen, the question is, and the stakes, by the way, the stakes could not be higher. You all know it, you students here, and by the way, I love your mascot. I call him donkey, you call him a mule. I like the look of him. election is pretty simple in a sense. I've been a senator since I've been 29 years old. I got elected back in 1972 as a 29-year-old kid, and the truth of the matter is, I have never seen a presidential election in my lifetime where the choice is so absolutely clear. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, look, you know, in the past elections, the refrain made famous by Ronald Reagan was, are you better off now than you were four years ago. That's not the question. Everybody, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, they all know, they all know, and I mean this sincerely, that things are not better than they were four or eight years ago. The real question for us, the real question for Barack and me, the real question for the American people, is who will make us better off four years from now? Obama! You may, have seen, you may have seen the last presidential debate where my friend John McCain insisted that he was not George W. Bush. And then, and then, last week, John McCain started attacking President Bush's budget and fiscal policies after eight years of championing those policies. Folks, that's what we Catholics call an epiphany. <laughs> Look, folks. Actually, I guess, I guess if it really was an epiphany, John would have seen the light. The fact is, if he saw the light, John would have to acknowledge a reality, and it is a reality. The economic crisis we're in today is the final verdict on the failed economic policy of the last eight years. John can 
continues to cling to. As recently as this past Sunday on Meet the Press, John was asked about he and President Bush, and he said that he and President Bush, quote, share a common philosophy. Well, I got four granddaughters and one grandson. My little 10-year-old granddaughter is named Finnegan Biden. If she had heard that, she would have gone, hello? <laughs> Surprise! Of course you share his philosophy, John. You've shared it, and you've shared it honorably and straightforwardly for the last eight years. It's only now, it's only now, John is trying to distance himself from that philosophy. Folks, I know Halloween is tomorrow night. <laughs> John McCain, dressed as the agent of change, is a costume that does not fit. <laughs> against the very Bush economic policies that John McCain continues to cling to, continues to believe in. If you want to know where those policies are going to lead us, just look in the rearview mirror. That's where you'll know where it's leading us. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, policies like tax cuts for companies that send jobs overseas while providing absolutely no relief to 100 million American families. Policies that call for taxing your health care benefits for the first time in history. Policy, policies that give an additional $4 billion a year to the Exxon Mobiles of the world as if they need it. Look, folks, just this morning there were two new pieces of news and they were consequential. The one piece of very bad news was for the first time this year, the gross domestic product, our most basic measure of our economy, has shrunk the last quarter. And it shrank largely, largely because people, middle class people, have cut back on spending because they don't have that much to spend. The second piece of news was that ExxonMobil announced the largest quarterly profit ever, $15 billion in profit this quarter. Do we need any more evidence that the Exxon Mobiles of the world don't need another tax break? No, we don't. Ladies and gentlemen, that $4 billion or more should go to middle class taxpayers. Yeah. 